Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have z cubed equals i and we're going to be solving for z values. I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to replace z with A plus BI for two reasons. One, that's the name of this channel. Two, it solves the problem. And it's a general strategy for solving equations. You can replace, always replace z with a plus bi. And let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and use the cubic formula or the binomial theorem. But I kind of have a different version of it. So I cube the the first term and the second term first and then I add the three times the first and the second term in other words I think I should make it more clear with a formula so when I have to cube x plus y I usually write it as follows okay let's apply that formula and notice that b cubed is negative i Go ahead and simplify the left hand side. Notice a i squared is negative one. Let's put the real parts together. And the imaginary parts together. So in order for these two complex numbers to equal each other, the real parts have to equal. But on the right hand side, we have an imaginary number whose real part is zero. And its imaginary part is the coefficient of i, which is one. So from here, we get a system of equations. And this system can actually be solved very easily. I'll show you how. There's a couple different ways to solve it. One method is you can go ahead and directly add these equations. That gives you one. And then you can factor by grouping. This would be difference of two cubes. And then these two terms have a common factor. And then we get a common factor. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this method is going to work nicely because I just realized the right hand side is not zero. I was planning to use this for another problem, maybe in the future, because if the right hand side is zero, then we got a really good relationship. Anyways, um, this is probably not going to get anywhere unless I Maybe I can divide both sides by a minus b and write this, but I doubt it. I don't think it's going to amount to anything. Maybe I can do this. I could probably write this as a minus b squared, and then I would need a 6ab. So that kind of gives me two variables, a minus b and ab, but I only have one equation, so that's kind of problematic. So let's go ahead and forget about this. I don't think it's going to give us a good result. Maybe it will. Let's make our eraser a little bigger. Oops. Oh, looks like I just uh, I just did an undo. Okay, so instead of that, let's go ahead and do something else. All right, first uh, equation is actually fairly easy to handle. Factor out a. Yeah, this is much easier. The other one method was just ridiculous. From here, we get two things, two results. Okay, either a is equal to 0 or a squared equals 3b squared and we can actually use that result here if a is 0 if a is 0 then we get 0 minus b cubed equals 1 and we get b cubed equals negative 1 and b equals negative 1 remember b is a real number a is a real number so a equals 0 gives us b equals negative 1 which means z is a plus bi and that gives us negative i 
this should make sense, right? I mean, i cubed is negative i, negative i cubed is i. So it satisfies the equation. It's one of the solutions, right? What about the other ones that are going to come from here? Okay, how do I use that information? Uh, we can go ahead and maybe replace b squared with a th squared over 3. Or actually, we can kind of split it up again. Write a equals root 3b or a equals negative root 3b. Got it? So now, along with that one, let's use this equation. And we should get a solution from here. Okay. Let's replace a with root 3b. 3 times root 3b squared times b minus b cubed equals 1. This should give me 3b squared, 9b cubed, 8b cubed equals 1. b cubed equals 1 eighth. Remember, b is a real number. I keep saying it because complex numbers have 3 cube roots, but real numbers have only 1 cube root. Okay, that's one of the b values. And guess what? The other b value is probably going to be negative 1 half, right? But let's do it. 3 times negative root 3b. That replaces a times b minus b cubed equals 1 again. This time you're going to get negative... Actually, you're going to get um, 8b cubed equals 1 again. Wait a minute. That should not be the case. I don't know why we're getting both. Oh, you know what? We haven't found the a values. That's why. Okay. So b is going to be fixed, but there's going to be two a values that come from here because uh, b squared is constant for both values, or a squared, I should say. So a is root 3b, so a is going to be root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. Great. And this means z equals a plus b i, so root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i, or z equals negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. All right, great. Uh, I don't want to tell you more details at this point because that's going to come up with the third method. Okay, <laughs> uh, cool. Let's do the second method. I know uh, it, we've already taken some time, but I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to rush through this because I want this to be understood. Okay, that's the goal. And if you ask me what my preferred method is, I think it'll be the third one. But again, let, let me know what you think. So, we have z cubed equals i. Let's subtract z from both sides. Now, this kind of looks like a cube minus i, but we can turn it into a sum or difference of two cubes. Remember, i cubed is negative i, right? You hopefully know i squared is negative 1. i to the first power is i itself, right? So on and so forth. And i to the fourth, of course, is 1. But we all need i cubed. So let's replace negative i with i cubed. Guess what that becomes? Sum of two cubes, which can be factored. z plus i, remember the formula, z squared minus iz plus i squared, which is negative 1. Let's just write it as i squared. Let's not skip any steps. And then from here, z plus i, z squared minus iz minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. We're going to solve for z. Uh, this one gives us z equals negative i which is one of the solutions, obviously, right, which we found with the first method. And by setting this equal to 0, we get a quadratic equation, okay? Quadratic formula, b squared is negative 1 plus 4 divided by 2. And from here, you get square root of 3, which is a real number, plus minus root 3 plus i over 2. Or you can write it as root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i, or negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. So the real part uh, is negated. The imaginary part stays the same. And this basically makes up the whole set of solutions. Because this is cubic, it should have three complex solutions. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and talk about the third method, because I think it's fun. But again, it's up to you uh, to decide. Okay. So, for the third method, I'm going to use the polar form. In the argon plane, I is, lives here, which is one unit away from zero, and it makes pi over 2 radians. But, don't forget to add multiples of 2 pi. So, we're going to write i as e to the power i times pi over 2 
plus 2 pi n. Now, if n is equal to 0, you can get a set of solutions. But before that, let's go ahead and cube root both sides or raise both sides to the power one third, right? And when you do, you're multiplying the exponent by one third or dividing by three. This gives you z, which can be written as e to the power i times if you divide everything inside. You know what? Another thing I can do is I can make a common denominator and write it like this, okay? <coughs> and then multiply this by one half. So it's going to give me this, like this, right? You can even uh, simplify this a little bit more, but that's not necessary. Let's just replace n with zero. We get z equals e times i, e to the power i times pi over six. Now pi over six is 30 degrees, cosine 30. This is cosine pi over six plus i sine pi over six. And as you know, cosine pi over six is one half, and this is root three over two i. Is that correct? No, not really. It's yes, the other way around. Come on. What are you talking about? So this should be root three over two, and this should be one half of i, which again agrees with what we found. Now, if you want to find the other cube root, you're going to place n with one and two, or you can multiply this by the un uh, roots of cubic roots of unity. But anyways, that's another thing. If n is equal to one, let's do it. This is easier. Z is equal to e to the power. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you have the cube roots, they're basically separated by 120 degrees or 2 pi over 3 radians, right? So you, all you have to do is add 2 pi over 3 to this, which is 4 pi over 6, which is going to give you 5 pi over 6, right? And 5 pi over 6 is actually in the second quadrant because it's less than pi. In second quadrant, cosine is negative. So you're going to get negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half of i. And if you add another 2 pi over 3 to this, which is 4 pi over 6, you're going to get 9 pi over 6, which is 3 pi over 2, or negative pi over 2, and that should give you the negative i. So if n is equal to 2, z will be e to the power i times negative i times pi over 2, and that would be z equals negative i. Okay, so here's what, where it's located. You see that? 3 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. All right, great. Was this the third method? I think so. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.